Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently down 0.96% to 16,806. Ethereum is down 1.46% to 1231. On a day like today, the majority of people, the vast majority of people see nothing but red, but that's not actually true. It's always green. You just have to find it. And this is why abundance thinking is so important when it comes to trading and investing. When people get caught in scarcity mode, fear will rule their decision making process. However, professional traders and investors actually hunt out the green in red days like this. It is there, you just have to find it. And the key is to just start small and scale. As crypto technical analysts, we first mark up our charts with the CTKS method. This helps us to actually understand where smart money is buying and selling. Then we look to the external market, checking world events and collecting probabilities. We pop back into the crypto market, finding the market's focus, understanding that opportunities reset daily and enhancing our pattern recognition. We always know that there are opportunities no matter how red the market. Red days like this do not scare us. We actually wait for this, but we go long at spot. We do not short. And before we buy or sell, we must get rid of fear and install courage. Fear is a very, very problematic thing in investing and trading. And positive excellence and real wealth have the solution to get rid of fear. It's very natural to only want to buy on green and only want to sell on red. But this is actually an institutional trap. It would be like you go to the department store and only buy when the sale is 20% plus an increase in price of 20%. For example, that's just crazy. We always wait for a discount sale, but in the markets, we wait for prices to go higher than what they should be or what they could be given the current macro environment. And this is something really important. So how do you desensitize yourself to the buying on green, selling on red? You don't want to do that. You want to instead buy on red, sell on green. It's an institutional mindset. I invented Borsog trading as a market synchronization technique. So you just start with really, really small position sizes and then scale up. You're seeking to synchronize in with the market, get the market's feeling. You'll know when you're synchronized because you'll get the Midas touch. When you can scale up, that's good. That's all about adding to your winners. But if you see things turning against you, you find that you're getting desynchronized, just descale and just go around this particular loop. There's always advantages in market. It doesn't matter. Even on the reddest of reddest days, you can do really, really well. We have a lot of fear inside the economic system, but we always have a lot of fear inside the economic system. This is something to bear note of. It's always the case that there's always fear and there's always opportunity. From Bloomberg, Treasuries rally as economic fears weigh on stocks. And Putin is warning that the threat of nuclear world war is rising. But if you actually read the Russian newspapers, you don't get any hint of that at all. In fact, you see the opposite kind of headlines. Vladimir Putin says special military operation can be a long process. The war in Ukraine is not going the Russian president's way. In fact, Russia has been pushed back from so many zones and so many regions. Actually, what you can see here is the fighting is spilling into Russia. 
I want to give you a very simplistic and probably very stupid illustration of this. Just imagine in Australia, the Northern Territory wanted to take over Queensland. So it sends its troops into Queensland to fight and regain areas across the border. Because after all, these Queenslanders want to be part of the Northern Territory. Well, that's what the Northern Territory says, but actually Queensland is resource rich and Northern Territory just wants the resources. That's as simple as it gets. So Queensland fights back, expels this particular problem and starts to spill the fighting into the Northern Territory. And so what does the Northern Territory do? It says, I have nuclear weapons. I'm going to nuke the world. Oh yeah, right. It's a silly example, but it explains what's happening. A lot of people are concerned about Russia and nuclear weaponry, but I would be more concerned about North Korea. North Korea is run by a dictator and his sister, and it's all about them gaining power, especially nuclear weaponry. And they're becoming increasingly aggressive. Just two days ago, North Korea fired some 130 artillery shells off its east and west coasts dictatorships and authoritarian regimes are all about power and control and you can see two days ago north korean military has issued an emergency order order to prepare combat troops and units at all levels this is the area that we should be watching and this is why i like to look at the newspapers for the various regions when we look at south korea's the korean herald you can see that there are a certain range of stories, but there's not widespread panic, at least not yet. To assess if geopolitical risk is getting out of control, please have a look at the gold futures. They can give a really, really good story as to how much the world is paying attention to something specific. But gold isn't only actually driven up in price by wars or the threat of wars. It's also driven by inverse real rates. And the dollar falling and yields falling can create a very good environment for gold to rally. And that's what we've seen recently. Yields have been coming down and they've just actually started collapsing down. The dollar has been coming down. Bond prices have been coming up. There's a lot to understand about the economic system. It's all interconnected and intercorrelated. The two things to keep your eye on at the moment are the VIX, the volatility gauge of the market, of the S&P 500. And the VIX has been coming down. Fear has been coming down out of the market for some time. And what does that do? That actually increases price. But we've got to be aware, VIX has been coming down for a long time. So why didn't the markets just rally? You can see the VIX has been coming down and down and down. Why weren't the markets just going up and up and up? Because of the dollar. The dollar strength has also got a lot of weight. These are very complex interrelationships, but it's really important to understand when fear goes up, the majority of cases of times, the majority of probability is that prices will come down. If the dollar goes up, at the moment. Sometimes it doesn't correlate like this. So just be aware of simplistic associations. But at the moment, if the dollar comes up, it's likely to be a flight to safe havens, just people pulling their money out of the markets. And I do a deep dive on this in TM6 inside the masterclass. And masterclass students, you'll also get my live charts in TM6. One thing that we do not want to see is the S&P 500 lose this lower level of support at around 35.77. That could herald very, very negative things to come. So we want to see what is the structure of structural support and resistance inside the S&P 500. There's only really one way to do this, and that's through the CTKS method that actually looks at all of price action, not just recent price action. What we're looking at are zones of support. Anything that is shaded below the current price of 39.33 is actually support. And we can see we've got a lot of support around that lower area. This means that the S&P 500 could come down, find support in this zone above 36.10. 
and actually keep on going up. There's been a minor trend change with this particular peak. So we need to keep this in mind. So what we're actually looking at is that we do not want the S&P 500 to lose this lower level. If it loses that lower level, that's not good. There is support below, but it's starting to thin out. You will learn how to do Stanfield zones, these shaded areas, and they're actually from structural resistance and structural support. And they're very, very powerful. In CTKS method version two, coming December 11th. Just to give you an idea, if you were to actually look at the SPX, S&P 500 like this, you would not know where the structure is. Why is that? The S&P 500, the SPX, actually started trading on the 2nd of January, 1871. When I actually put structural support and resistance levels, I'm going all the way back to the 2nd of January, 1871 to do so. This is the CTKS method. What is the CTKS method? It's a new standards-based process that reveals smart money buy and sell levels from any price chart. You can learn it once and apply it for a lifetime to any price chart to think and profit like smart money. And it's applicable to global stocks, global market indices, metals, energy, industrials, currencies, bonds, and crypto. The outcome of the CTKS method is to create SLs or Stanfield levels. These are smart money resistance levels and smart money support levels. That's where smart money comes in and sells and buys as well. And we can see these lines are very, very well respected in the market. What we can actually look at, this is the DXY, the US dollar currency index. The DXY literally sold down from a smart money level of 106,998 all the way down to 104,113. It's actually started to come up. Now, what does this mean? Because it couldn't, the DXY couldn't get above 105,663. It's currently 105,158, <laughs> now 159. What you will find is price gravitates between these smart money sell levels and smart money buy levels. And the thicker the line, the more gravitational force that it has. And you can use the SL lines as entry and exits on your trade. Without the SL lines, you just simply don't know where the support, true support and true resistance is in the market. These support and resistance lines have been drawn from the start of price history to the current price. And the start of price history in the DXY is actually the 2nd of January, 1967. You'll find the CTKS method unlike anything you've ever seen before. All around the world, the central banks are trying to fight inflation by raising their rates. And the Bank of England is set to raise rates to 3.5% after inflation hits a 41 year high. Just like the US, the UK is experiencing a tight labor market. And President Xi's swift COVID retreat shows China masses they have real power. And the Communist Party is starting to dismantle COVID zero after protests. I've been saying for quite a while that it's going to be a trader's market, perhaps for the next five years. World economy heads for one of its worst years in three decades. When you're an investor, you have to get on the right side of the trade. That means that things are going up because typically investors buy at spot with money that they have and then just ride it all the way up. Of course, some investors use leverage, but the concept is when you get really, really choppy markets, just investment strategies do not work, but trading does. The next FOMC meeting is in around seven days, and there's currently a 74.7% probability of a 50 basis point increase in the federal funds rate. The Fed has an enormous problem. As the markets rally, break-even inflation rates actually increase. They need to kill the markets, well, at least temporarily. And so that's why so many people are coming out with bearish comments. And we saw in the recent analysis of Jerome Powell's speech, 
that the labor markets are really, really tight and there's a long way to go to fight inflation. The Fed sought to nuke inflation by basically nuking rates, exploding them up. It's cutting back currently on rate increases, not doing the standard 75 basis point increase time after time because it knows the economy will come apart at the seams. That's why we're seeing yields fall. That massive increase in the federal funds rate is actually putting a lot of pressure on forward earnings. And when we look at Apple, Apple had the bit of the bounce with the Jerome Powell misinterpretation of the speech. And we said we did the analysis of Jerome Powell's speech. There was nothing to be bullish about at all. The markets have fully retraced this particular gain already they're now underneath it basically and when we look at apple we must be aware of the structural support lines that reside within apple this is not recent price action this is all of price action in accordance with the ctks method standards apple is currently trading at 140.85 we can see that it came down to this smart money buy level at 139.83 and the buyers were stepping in so that's actually a pretty good sign and we do have multiple levels of support underneath as well unfortunately the same is not true with tesla tesla went too high too fast too far and as a result it didn't get an opportunity to create structure underneath it this is really typical in the crypto space this is why crypto is a explosive implosive asset class and we can see tesla with the kind of same fingerprint but what we notice is that tesla is starting well has actually lost its support it's currently 173.78, but it's underneath multiple levels of now resistance. And you can see some strong selling pressure came in here. So where's the next level of support? This is structural support. It's down at the 130.30 level. So $130.30. That's quite a fall. But these levels do remain magnetized at the moment because price is close. The reason that we spend time on the markets is no old can escape Bitcoin's gravity and Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. All of these systems are intercorrelated and interconnected. You can see that the crypto fear and greed index hasn't moved much. It's moved slightly up. That means a degree of optimism actually returned to the market. Total crypto market cap is currently 796 0.4 billion and we can see that we've lost two levels of support they're now acting as resistance we did actually break through come and have a retest and resume down it's very close to call but these levels will remain magnetized for some time if we do lose the 799 billion resistance level if price stays below that because price is below it is a resistance if price was above it would be support so this 707 is a support line but you can see there's not a lot there's a lot of fresh air in this particular gap there's not a lot of support levels to catch price on the way down so we must be very very aware of things it's very important to understand what moves the crypto market and that's Bitcoin plain and simple. Fortunately, Bitcoin does have a level of support below it at 16,653. It's currently 16,823 at the moment. And we can notice that max pain for tomorrow is still 17,000. It has a level of resistance above at 17,426. And remember, all these SLs are drawn from all of price action. And we do not look at recent price action when we're doing this. When looking at the longs and the shorts for Bitcoin, we can see the Bitcoin shorts are gaining more and more momentum. And they're coming in because they're liquidating the longs. Total liquidations across the past 24 hours were 70.71 million across 27,728 positions. And when we look at total liquidations across the past 24 hours, we can see about 83% were long. I'll just move that up a little bit so you can see those. 
What about for the past 12 hours, about 53% long, the past 4 hours, 83% long, and the past hour, about 50% long. So we can see the longs have been fairly whacked as far as getting liquidated just recently, and that's showing up in the stats. But also, always bear in mind the shorts and the longs always get liquidated. It's just the proportion of shorts to longs or longs to shorts that changes. But both sides are always liquidating each other. In crypto news today, crypto's flat as recession fears outweigh improved US labor productivity. As you can see, the main markets and crypto are interrelated. In the wake of the FTX scandal, and it's just fraud, I think we need to call a spade a spade. Sam Bankman-Fried committed fraud. He did it in crypto. If he did fraud in the stock market, he could be like a Bernie Madoff. It doesn't matter where these bad actors come from. They always leave a trail of financial devastation behind them. Mazars said users BTC reserves on Binance are fully collateralized. Binance possess control over 575,742.42 Bitcoin of its customers worth $9.7 billion at the time of publication. It's fully collateralized. Crypto consumer protection, proof of reserves bills introduced into the US Congress. U.S. Congressman Richie Torres has introduced bills into the House of Representatives to prohibit misuse of customer funds by cryptocurrency exchanges. This is exactly what FTX and SBF did. And to require exchanges to disclose proof of reserves to the Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC. ECB officials propose ban on tokens with an excessive ecological footprint. EU officials previously rejected an outright ban on crypto mining, but the Markets in Crypto Assets bill could require firms to report any potential environmental impact. Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX have single-handedly pushed crypto under the microscope of the regulators globally. Thank you, Sam. And that was not a thank you. And Binance US eliminates trading fees for Ethereum. Elon Musk likely to lose the number one richest spot. Elon is currently the richest person in the world with 185.3 billion. Well done, Elon. Not a bad idea. And number two position, 184.7. And number three, 134.8. There's certainly a lot of money out there. Bernard is doing very well. He has Moe, Louis Vuitton, Sephora, and 70 fashion and cosmetic brands. In January of 2021, he bought Tiffany & Co. for $15.8 And he's doing very, very well. Just in, Coinbase CEO expects revenue to fall by over 50% in 2022. Looking towards the greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, GMX, TWT, EOS, Synthetix, TON, Nexo, and Pax Gold. The greatest losers in the top 100 over the past 24 hours, IMX, Cello, Ape, Awe, Flow, Axie, and One Inch. We know that no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity and look at Ethereum just moving in alignment with the directional movements in Bitcoin, following it just recently to a ping. And we can see the same with Binance coin. We can see that XRP is a little bit stronger. That could be an interesting price signal, just something to be aware of. And we can see Doge just moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. ADA doing exactly the same. We can see Matic showing a degree of strength just recently. Another thing to keep your eye on. DOT just moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. And Litecoin also showing a little bit of strength. Looking at the next eight top cryptos, we can see SHIB just going in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. Solana took off, actually inverted, and then was pulled back into alignment. This is just how powerful Bitcoin's gravity is. Nothing can escape it, ultimately. In the short term, yeah, absolutely. In the long term, no way. 
That's just not how the crypto market works. And we can see Tron starting to gather a little bit of strength here. That could be really good. And what about Uni? Also starting to gather some strength. Link just moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. ABAX a slight amount of strength. Adam no strength at all. Looking really, really weak. And XLM also looking weak. Thank you to everybody who commented in yesterday's video. And Dan said, the thing I love about the masterclass and daily videos is the compound knowledge, digging into complex concepts and initially it making no real sense. With effort, determination showing up every single day. Every so often, this a profound light bulb moment where the concept that was previously confusing just clicks into place. And that makes a whole host of new concepts now available. This then acts as a new carrot in the quest for mastery. Oh, beautiful Dan. And to Beardy, Beardy, happy birthday for your beloved twins, one year old, both today. How cool is that? And well done again, Beardy, Tails, and Let Me Know Barry for putting together that trailer. How cool is that? As Beardy said, it should be a ripper. What is this mythical trailer of which we speak? Let's play. And a big thank you again to Beardy, Tails, and Barry. Wow, what a creative force. And Beardy said, this community is so positive, creative, caring, and fun. So happy the universe landed me here. <laughs> oh, Beardy says, if this is the bear market, I don't think my heart can withstand a bull market. It's already full. Oh, Beardy. Thank you, Tiana, for your very kind comment. The whole masterclass system is an absolute masterpiece. Invention of a century in finance. My favorite part is charting, and I s can't stop my heart zooming just thinking about version two. Thank you, my friend. And Crypto Turtle said, what I love about the CTKS method is I can see the market structure and I can see where the strong support and resistance lines are. I can buy and sell with confidence. This method is the way to print money, but with no fear applying on the red days. And I know to exit quickly when things do not go to plan. And Crypto Turtle said, I would like more people to apply for the partial scholarships, but you must be ready to work hard and work on yourself. I would be happy to help as my way of saying thank you to KS3, Ken, Kate, and of course, our beloved global family. Thank you, CT, for your very kind words. And Johnny said, the CTKS method has helped me to be more independent and able to run the numbers and interpret the charts myself. Well done, Johnny. And John says, the CTKS method of charting takes the fear out of market movements. I'm able to plan for the market entries at major support lines drawn from all of market history. Have a great day. And you too, John. And thank you for your kind comment. Barnes said, the CTKS method lines give me much faster signals than traditional TA lines and patterns. When throwing everything together, it gives us a license to print money. Thank you, my friend. Sinman said, drawing the CTKS lines builds your understanding of the current trend and gets you ready for the next trend. Each trend line is like an alarm clock. When the price and time meet at the trend line, alarm bells start to go off. It's likely time for a new trend. Awesome, Sinman. Al said, the CTKS method, especially the line drawing, i.e. the technical side, has given me the added skills, confidence, and patience I needed to be successfully scaling into and out of the market. It has made such a difference in getting onto the right side of the percentages. Thanks so much, Al. Al also says, apologies, Ken. I have to admit that I've used the teachings in the masterclass to trade stocks, bonds, and precious metals more than I have used them in crypto. They're even being used on a longer term Borsog trade in real estate. They seem to work on every asset class. Many people would like to know what's different between version one and version two massive amount of difference. Version two is applicable to any financial instrument and I've checked them all. 
Al, you're going to absolutely love this upgrade. And to Yana, that's what's different. I'm always looking for ways to help our beloved global family. Stay tuned, the 11th of December is coming and it's going to be awesome. Dinesh wrote, Can to answer today's question, the CTKS charting method has given me the blueprint to draw up the structural view of any asset based on candlesticks or trend charts. Having this ability reminds me of when I first learned how to draw and mark up engineering drawings of components in my university days and giving away that I had a career as a systems engineer. This means that I can mark up the foundation and top level architecture of any asset just like Al does with stocks and be able to look at it objectively with current price actions. Thank you so much for your comment, Anesh, especially with what you're going through at the moment. And it's so hard to hear that your daughter's mother-in-law had passed away. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, please know that our global family's love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. There's a lot of support within our community and you can see that the people within our community, they're very genuine and very caring. And they're absolutely full of positive excellence. At the heart of positive excellence is an abundance mindset. Abundant and positive. The concept of abundance thinking is a really, really important one to discuss. When we look at the world as an abundant resource, and we know that what we give out to the world will come back in time, but we just go slow to go fast, just working on having really, really solid foundations as we go, such as inner and outer peace, kindness, authenticity, integrity, loyalty, decency. All of these things are beautiful ways to live. This is in direct contrast to Zone 1 and Zone 2. Zone 1 and Zone 2 is all about scarcity. It's about the lack of abundance. It's all about survival. The one thing to always bear in mind, people can have infinite wealth and be in survival mode, be in Zone 1 and Zone 2. It's not about money. It's about thinking. That is why there are actually three levels of thinking. Poor thinking, rich thinking, and wealthy thinking. And they're all completely different from each other. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. What do you understand of the differences between poor thinking, rich thinking, and wealthy thinking? I think it's a beautiful thing to talk about because it will help an enormous number of people. And I love reading out your comments. The pathway to wealthy thinking is within the CTKS creed. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. And I never let a problem beat me. Saying these positive words to yourself creates abundance thinking. And that's particularly important on red days like today. And as a community, we never let a problem overshadow us. We've always, we always have a solution. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care. And see you next time. Bye for now.